Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. If you ask Paul, how was your life so successful, so fruitful? How did you finish your race? So that at the end of your life, you have testimony? How? This is be Paul's answer. And since we have the same spirit of faith, like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and David, this is what he says. I believed. I believed what God said to me. And I spoke. I spoke. I used my mouth. And therefore, we also believe. He's quoting from David, a Psalms. We also believe and we therefore speak. Spirit is more important than the body. You may know what faith is, you may know the scriptures, but no spirit, no attitude, no fire to the faith. The spirit of faith is an attitude that comes from this confidence, this persuasion. The spirit of faith never gives up in any circumstance. The spirit of faith is a fire that is in your faith that no matter what pressure comes in your life, you speak what you believe. There are two components to the spirit of faith. Number one, believe. Number two, speak. Understand this, you cannot speak until you believe. So don't try to speak boldful, boldly before you believe first. Seven sons of Sceva, they observed Paul who was exercising, casting out demons, and they said, oh, Paul says this way, in the name of Jesus, come out. So write it down, in the name of Jesus, come out. Paul is using his finger, all right, write it down. He used his finger. Paul's face is stern. So they copied all the external parts, and they said, let's start a ministry called Deliverance Ministry. Seven sons, one is the offerer, one is the worshiper leader, one is the one who's preaching. Seven sons of Sceva, they went around trying to deliver people out of demons. They did not have the belief. They did not have the faith. They did not have the truth. They had the system copied from Paul. So what happened? The demons caught them and beat them up, made them naked and kicked them out of that place. Because the demons said, Jesus we know, Paul we know, who are you? See. Demons don't recognize your show. They only recognize faith, what you believe here. If you don't have faith, they know you are just opening your mouth only. In the spirit realm, faith can be seen. You must get this truth. In the realm of the spirit, when you are having a spirit encounter with evil spirits, they see your faith. They don't see your actions and behavior. So believe and speak. That means you get the word of God and you believe in your heart because it's the word of God and you speak. That's the spirit of faith. Can you say amen? It doesn't matter how bound you are in depression, in weakness, in fear. It doesn't matter how bound you are in death, in depression. It doesn't matter how bound you are right now. Do you have a mouth? If you have a heart and you have a mouth, you can overcome. You can move your mountains. If you have a heart and a mouth, you can kill your giants. The first place faith must touch after it's come is your mouth. The first place faith must touch is your tongue. If faith cannot move your mouth, your faith cannot move your mountains. If your faith does not move your mouth, your faith will not kill your giants. Remember David, he killed Goliath first with his words. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Today I'll take your head and give it to the birds of the air. David did not keep quiet. He exercised his belief by speaking, by speaking. So as long as your mouth is open, you can exercise faith. You can change your situation. Believing and speaking will connect you to the supernatural power of God. When you exercise the spirit of faith, don't worry what people will say, what people will think. Your life is more important than what people think. Your life will never be determined by what people think. Don't give too much weight to what people think, naga people. Your whole life worried about what people think. Do you think they can make your life move an inch? Cannot. What God thinks of you is more important. What you think of yourself is more important. Can you say amen? Why is speaking so important? Let me give you these three points quickly. Turn to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Why do you need to speak what you believe? This is the hidden mystery to speaking what you believe. If you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead, you will be saved. Next verse. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay, just look at me here. Before you're born again, the Bible says you are a sinner. You are in death. You are in this place spiritually called sin. The Bible says you are in the prison of darkness. How do you leave this place and transport to life? Transport to righteousness. Transport to the kingdom of Jesus. How do you leave this place and go to this place? The Bible says, believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. And that's what moves you from one place to the other place. That's how you travel in the spirit. Let the weak say, I'm strong. You move from weakness to strength. 
It's from your mouth. That's why you need to speak. Because every time you speak, your heart is moving. Every time you speak, your mind is moving. Every time you speak, it's renewing you on the inside. Your mode of transportation in the spirit is believe and speak. The engine of your life which moves your life is faith. The fuel in the engine is grace. Use your engine every day. Don't stay in the same place. Every day say, I believe I'm blessed. I believe I'm strong. And you will always be moving. Why is it so important to speak? The second reason is this. The word homologeo, which means confession in the Greek, which means say the same thing. That means say what God says. Speak what God says. Be in agreement with God. Be in agreement with the Word of God. Don't say opposite of the Bible. The Bible says you're blessed. Don't say I'm so cursed. My family is so cursed. Don't say that. So, why do we need to speak? Because listen to this. This is very important. When you speak, your faith registers. It's like a flash that you can see. Your faith registers in three places. Number one, heaven. Because faith is a tangible substance in the spirit. How do I know heaven sees me? Because the Bible says, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before the Father in heaven. Matthew 10, 32. Jesus said that if you confess me on the earth, I will confess you before the Father. If you say on the earth, Jesus is Lord. Jesus will say to the Father, here. This sister is saying, Jesus is Lord. The Bible says in Hebrews 3.1, He is the high priest of our confession. The role of the high priest is this. The role of the high priest is to represent your confession to the Father. Jesus represents all of us. So Jesus, when you say, I am healed, Jesus represents that. He's the high priest of our confession, our homologeo, our saying the same thing that He says about us. So when you speak in the earth, it is registered in heaven. Don't let heaven register only your complaints, your murmurings. Number two, where does it register? Very important. It registers in your heart. If you believe in your heart and you speak with your mouth, bang, you become a new creation. Life comes here. Whoo, glory to God. The Holy Spirit comes here. Hallelujah. You receive life here because the Bible says, I will give you a new heart. How did you get a new heart? You believed and you spoke, bang. Something happened here. So every time you believe and speak, there's a registering taking place. What's that registering called? It's called the renewing of your mind. That registering, what is it called? It's called giving you a new image, a new picture. It's called changing the old imaginations and putting in a new picture of the Word of God so that every time you speak, something is happening in your heart. Hallelujah. The third place it registers. It registers in hell because the Bible says the moment you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you believe and you speak, what happens? You leave this place called darkness. You leave this place called the kingdom of Satan. From darkness to light. Satan was holding you by deceiving you in this prison. He doesn't want you to get born again. He doesn't want you to get born again. But the moment you believed and spoke, he has no power to hold you back. The moment you believe and speak, it registers in hell. Amen. That's the way you establish authority even in your own home. That's why the Bible says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Psalms 1072. Are you redeemed? Yes. Say it then. Say so. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Praise the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say, say, say. Not sing so. Say so. We made it into a song, so we only sing it. We don't say anymore. That's the problem and tragedy with Christianity. We make everything songs. We sing it only during Jubilee. We don't say it in our lives. Psalms 91 verse 2. This is a verse you need to be memorizing in our times when you're traveling. What do you say? I will say of the Lord. I will say. I will say. I will say. I will confess of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. In Him I will trust. The power of Psalms 91 is when you say it, not when you write it and put it here in your pocket. When you say it, I will say, I will say of Jehovah, He is my refuge and my fortress. Psalms 35 verse 27, look at that. Let them say continually. Let them say, let them say, let them say continually. Continually means regularly. Continually what, 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 what? Let them say continually. Let them say, say, say. Not think. Not write it on the scripture and put it on your wall. We're all experts in doing that. Let them say continually. Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Don't let it be in the Bible alone. It must be in your mouth. You must say, 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 say. Hello, dear viewers. 
My name is Sean Kikon, and I'm the senior pastor of Faith Harvest Church here in the city of Kohima, the state of Nagaland, and in the blessed country of India. And it is our pleasure and privilege to bring the good news, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to you from the mountains of Nagaland. We believe that as a people, the Nagas, we are called and destined by God to be preachers, teachers, proclaimers, of the good news of salvation to all the nations of the world because in the same way that our society was transformed from headhunters to a vibrant Christian community today, we believe we are called to proclaim that same message that brought the power of Jesus Christ into our community. And that's the reason why we have the mountain voice coming to you from the hills of Nagaland. If you are a regular watcher of our Mountain Voice episodes, would you kindly consider doing two things for us today? Number one, if you have a testimony, if you have been blessed in any way, would you kindly write to us on our email ID or even send a text on the numbers that are displayed on the screen? We would love to hear from you and understand, assess and see how this channel has been impacting people all across this country and even in the other nations. And my second request is this, would you kindly consider becoming a partner with The Mountain Voice for the proclamation of the gospel through God TV? We know that the gospel must be proclaimed in all the nations of the world till every tribe, nation, people and tongue has listened to the good news of salvation. But we also know that it requires resources to proclaim the gospel. If you would consider prayerfully becoming a partner with us with any specific amount on a monthly basis, a one-time basis, or even an annual basis, we would be greatly appreciative of your generosity. And every seed that you sow towards the mountain voice will go towards the proclamation of the gospel. The giving details will be displayed on the screen. If you can kindly email us the screenshots or on the descriptions, add the reason why you are giving the Mountain Voice. We would greatly, greatly appreciate your gifts and we can work together to proclaim the good news to the nations of the world. God bless you as you continue to listen to this message. We look forward to hearing from you. Why are you speaking so powerful? The third reason, it will change the way you see yourself. And the way you see yourself is critical to your success. Numbers 13, verse 31 to 33. The 10 spies came back with a bad report. The two other spies, Joshua and Caleb, had a positive report. They went and saw the same land, the same mountain of grapes, the same blessed land flowing in milk and honey. All 12 of them have the same knowledge of God. All 12 of them have the same testimonies in the wilderness. But this is what the spies said. Verse 31, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. The way they saw themselves was they are inferior, small people, backward tribe, kinky people in India. Yeah, the way they saw themselves. Do you know God is not limiting you? And no power of government can limit you also if you believe in the word of God. Next verse, 32. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report, an evil report of the land which they spied out saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. They were moved by what they saw. They were moved by what they saw. They saw, ah, they saw, ah. They saw and they got intimidated. They were moved by what they see. What you see is an enemy to your faith. That's why to practice faith, exercise faith, you cannot be moved by what you see. Cannot be moved by the circumstances, by what you hear. Don't let it move you here. Bad news comes, fine, let it come. Don't let it move your heart. You see negativity, fine. Don't let it move your heart. Stay in faith. Believe and speak. Believe and speak. Look at the next verse. Therefore we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak come from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. Now listen. Were they grasshoppers? No, they were not. They were all leaders of the tribes. They were mighty men and women of God. They were warriors, but they saw themselves as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So the spies saw themselves as weaker, as grasshoppers, because they said it. They said, we are like grasshoppers. They said, we are not able. They said it because they were moved by what they saw and what they heard. Listen to this. The ten spies and the rest of Israel, they did not lose to the giants in the land. Do you know that? 
You know what they lost to? They lost to the grasshoppers in their hearts. They did not lose. They could not enter the promised land because of the giants. No, the giants were not big enough to keep them. God would have fought for them, right? But they have to go by faith. They did not enter the promised land because of the giants and because the sons of Anak were there. They could not enter the promised land because of the grasshoppers in their heart. The way they saw themselves. How far you will go in life is not determined by how much enemies you have. It's not determined. How much you will go in life is determined by what you believe here about yourself. How far you will go in life is not determined only by what you see about God. How far you will go in life is determined by what you see about yourself in the Word, in God. It's also by what you believe about yourself, what God has made you and given to you. Can you say amen? The sad part about this story is this. God lets you settle for what you settle for. If in your heart you say, this is me, God doesn't force you. God never forces success on anyone. That's the sad part about faith. God will let you settle for what you settle. That's why when the devils cannot stop you, from believing in God, you know what they will stop you? They will stop you from believing who you are in Christ. They will give you false doctrine about yourself. No grace, no righteousness, no identity. I'm a worm. I'm hopeless. I'm useless. He will make you believe that doctrine. He will stop you from believing what you are in Christ. But Caleb and Joshua were different. Caleb said, we are available. Even when he was 80 years old, he said, I can take this mountain. So... Caleb had what he spoke. Don't be silent in your faith. You need to speak because that's the way spirit beings operate. God speak and things come to pass. God speaks. We are created in His image. That means the way we create is by speaking what we believe. You must speak. The Bible says you will have whatever you say. Mark eleven twenty three. right? If you believe in your heart and do not doubt, but you confess and you speak to the mountains, be removed and be cast into the sea, you will have whatever you say. See, the wonderful truth about this verse is this. You will not have what people say. You will have what you say. So don't let what people say hurt you. Let them say. You will not have what people say. You will have what you say. So don't believe what people say if it is opposite to the Word of God. You must speak what you believe because the Bible says you will have what you say. Not what your enemies say. Not what your uncles say. Not what people curse you. Do you know that Goliath cursed David in the name of his gods? Let people curse you. You may be preaching in a place where there are so many other religions and the people may come and curse you. You will not have what they say. You will have what you say. So don't let what people say make an image in your heart that you are that. Your father may have said you are useless out of the anger when they were drunk. Your mother may have called you bad girl. You see, all these things happen. We counsel such people. Even what your parents say, you will not have unless you believed what they said. Some people of you right now, the Lord is saying that the many of you, there's a limitation in your heart and mind because of the words you heard from your parents and you have believed those words. It has wounded your soul and you have believed those words and those words have become a limiting factor in your destiny. You cannot go ahead in life. You cannot go ahead in faith because of the hurt that came from the words of your father and mother. But today, there's a change coming in your heart right now. The Lord is cutting that off from your life right now. The power of those words is breaking from your life right now. You will not have what your father and mother said. You will have what you say. Come on, say this with me. I will have what I say. And what you say, make it, it the word of God, all right? Don't say, I'll be Salman Khan. Make sure it's what God says about you. Listen to this. Your mouth is greater than your thoughts. You must understand this. Your mouth is greater than your thoughts. So how do you conquer your thoughts? You have to speak. When you're having fear here, you're having ugly thoughts here, you're having worry here, how do you change this? How do you reprogram your brain and your mind? Very simple, speak. Because as you speak, it changes the direction of your brain. This is truth, all right? This is scientific truth. When you speak, it changes the neural pathways of your brain. It changes the DNA of your brain. It changes the cells of your brain when you speak. That's why you should not speak what you feel. You should speak what you believe. Paul was bound, bleeding, but they didn't say, Oh, Silas, I'm bleeding. Oh, me also bleeding. Oh, I can't move my legs. I can't move my legs either. They did not speak what they were going through. They praised God. It changes the neural pathways of your brain when you speak. And as you speak, it takes authority over the thoughts. 
That's why words are very powerful. Satan and Eve were taken out of Eden because of the words of Satan that they believed. Don't take words lightly. There are many words out there in YouTube, many so-called discernment ministries which need discernment themselves. Always attacking these men and women of God saying they preach false doctrines. But if you listen to them, they have no sound wisdom from the word. If all the ministry is only about attacking other ministries, that's the first sign they are not called of God. But how do you get views? You get views by making something controversial. This preacher said that. This preacher said that. And you'll watch because your mind is attracted to sensational news, gossip. And the more you watch that, suddenly you wonder, you find out you are not in Eden anymore. Eden is a place of God's pleasure and presence. You're out of it. Words are very powerful. Very, very, very powerful. Destinies are shaped by words. How do you form a company? You form a company first by faith and words. Apple was formed by words. Google was formed by words. Tata was formed by words. Words that came from the founder. They wrote down the vision, the purpose, and they believed it. And they worked around it. They built buildings around those words. They built a people, a workforce, an organization around the words. Take away the words. In time, the company will crumble. Listen to this. The body without the spirit is dead. That spirit component you have to add. That's called faith. That's called belief in the word. That's called prayer. Can you say amen? So your mouth is greater than your thoughts. Your words are greater than your feelings. Your speaking will change your thoughts and your feelings. Your speaking will change your thoughts. It will change your feelings. And then it will change the decisions of your life. And it will change your life. That's why the Bible says, be transformed. Romans 12 verse 2. By the renewing of your mind. Before your life transforms. Before your finances and your marriage transforms. Be Transforming your mind first. How do you transform your mind? How do you do that? You get the word. You put it in your heart and you speak. And as you speak, your mind is being renewed. Hallelujah. The more you speak, I am blessed. I am healed. I am delivered. When you hear something which is opposite to what you have been confessing, you will recognize, no, this is a lie. You will recognize, no, this is not the truth. And you will not accept it. So, if you speak to your mountain, the word speak is the Greek word epo. E-P-O. It means command. Command your mountain to be moved and cast into the sea. Your mountains will speak to you. Your giants will speak to you. Goliath spoke to David. Your mountain of death will tell you, you will never be rich. Your mountain of sickness will tell you, you will always be sick. That mountain of pornography that you're dealing with will tell you, you will always struggle in this. But the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and you speak, you do not doubt, but you command your mountain to be moved and be cast into the sea. You will have whatever you say. So confess the word. Speak regularly, daily. What do I speak? Confess your faith in Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Every day say, the blood of Jesus has washed me. The blood of Jesus has made me white as snow. Confess your faith in the name of Jesus. Confess your identity in Christ. Confess who you are in Christ. Come, let's stand to your feet. Let's take a moment right now to speak what we believe. Come and say this with me. I am a believer and therefore I believe and I speak. I have the same spirit of faith as Paul and as David. And so I declare today, I am forgiven of all my sins. I am the righteousness of God. I'm justified. I'm accepted. I declare that I am blessed with every spiritual blessing. I declare I'm seated with Christ far above all principalities and powers and dominion. I declare I am loved. I'm accepted. I'm more than a conqueror. Nothing can take me out of the love of God. I declare I'm redeemed from every curse of the law. I'm redeemed from poverty. I'm redeemed from sickness. I declare the blessing of Abraham is on my life. I'm an heir of the promise. I declare I have a sound mind. I have a spirit of power. I have a spirit of love and fear is under my feet. I declare I'm seated with Christ. I'm accepted in Christ. I'm blessed in Christ. I declare that God's hand is upon me. The favor of God is on my life. The protection of God's on my life. I'm a new creation. The Holy Spirit is in me. I'm an overcomer. And the way I overcome is by my faith 
I declare that I overcome anything, any problem, any crisis the world will bring against me because I am born as an overcomer. I'm not afraid of any giants. I'm not afraid of any mountains. In Jesus' name, I speak to every mountain in my life, hindering me from possessing my promised land. I speak to every mountain. Sickness, go in Jesus' name. Lack, leave in Jesus' name. Fear, be removed from my life in Jesus' mighty name. I command every giant in my life to leave in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not win. I will possess my inheritance. Hallelujah. I am well able. I will take my inheritance. I will possess my mountain. I declare in Jesus' name, every inheritance, every promise is amen. Amen for my life. We just had such a powerful, powerful worship service. The presence of God was so thick. They were so hungry for the Word of God. The worship was amazing. But above all, the Holy Spirit came and showed up in the end. So many people received ministry for healing, deliverance, and salvation. I want to encourage you when you're watching this, would you kindly implement, practice, whatever was instructed in this sermon? Blessed are those who not only hear, but who are doers of the Word of God, who are practicers of the Word of God. So I strongly encourage my church and I encourage you, do the Word, and that's where you will see the power of God transform your life. And would you also please do me this favor? Would you follow us on our socials? Send us an email about a testimony, a blessing that you have received through this channel. We would love to keep in touch with you, all right? God bless you all, and we'll see you next time. School of the Supernatural Ministry invites all the pastors, leaders, and hungry believers. Learn how to function in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, minister healing to the sick, and much more. Scan the QR code to register. Starting from the 1st of November to the 22nd of November, 2024. Sign up today. Connect with us on our YouTube channel, Faith Harvest Church TV. Keep up to date with our latest contents by subscribing to the channel.